I'm not a hoarder. We live in a small house. I use that foot bath all the time. All the time. At least once every three months, I use that foot bath. That was the champagne bottle from my wedding, okay? I'm not. I'm not. Hi everyone, welcome to the tiniest office. Um, I'm here to make a video today to show you the whole process of how the tiniest office came to be. Um, it truly was a messy, ugly closet. Um, it was something that really bothered me. I'm a pretty organized person, but this closet was packed. And um, it's a really deep closet and it was just full of stuff. So, um, you know, I've been working at home uh, in my job for the last four months now. And I realized pretty quickly that we were not going to be going back to work anytime soon with the COVID-19 pandemic. And I was so tired of working in my bed or at the dining room table or, you know, there's just kids everywhere all the time. So um, I decided to make my own space. Uh, we do have a home office, it's huge, um, but my husband and children have taken it over completely and there is no space for me to quietly work. So. Um, my idea came when I went to clean out this closet. Um, when I did it, the bottom shelf of the closet looked like a little desk. Um, so I put my, my chair in here and I said, you know, I think I could work inside this office. And that's how the idea for the tiny office was born. So um, I took a lot of videos through the renovation and I'm gonna show those to you in a minute. Um, and also some before and after photos. So you see that the closet's a pretty good size. Um, the chair from my dining room table fit inside the closet really well. And that shelf that's remaining actually became the desk cap that I have in the office now. So once a decision was made to actually turn this into an office, I knew that I had to tear out all of the, um, the wood pieces that were holding up the other shelves so that I could have a smooth wall. Uh, to eventually decorate and paint. Um, so I tore those out and didn't know that I needed to score with like an X-Acto knife around the, the wooden pieces. So it pulled the paper away from the sheetrock and um, there was a lot of work that needed to be done to fix that. So if you have a professional who can give you tips like that, that's really good. Um, but I just sort of tore them off the wall and destroyed the sheetrock in the process. So I did have to um, get joint compound and a putty knife and mud over um, all of that damage and then sand it down. And surprise, I'm not a professional uh, joint compound or sheetrock or wall mutter person. And you're probably not either. If you are, um, teach me your ways or um, come do my projects from now on. Um, I'd seen my dad or my family members uh, do mud and joint compound before. And I said, oh, this is fine. I'll go get a bucket of this stuff and a knife and I'll just slap it on there and it'll be fine. So I did. And um, nope. I will give you one tip if you decide to do it yourself. Anytime you put mud on the wall, do it thin. Don't just slap it on there. You want to because there's so many holes and things to fill and you want to just do it as thick as possible. But that stuff hardens like a rock and then you have to sand it off. So I have these sponges. Um, that were made for sanding sheetrock. And I said, you know what, this is gonna be fine. I'm good at this, I'm crafty, and I'm gonna sand all this down. It's gonna be smooth as a baby's butt. Um, as you can probably see from the wall behind me, and as you will see later in this video, it is not smooth as a baby's butt. It is bumpy, it is lumpy, it has holes, and I'm hoping that all of the wall art that I've ordered will cover it up because I'm not a professional. 
So I think my tip would ultimately be if you're gonna do this yourself and try to be as DIY and crafty as possible, put that mud on really thin and sand the crap out of it. Your arm's gonna be falling off, you're gonna be crying, you're gonna wish you didn't do it. But keep sanding. You think you've sanded enough? Sand it again, and then again. And then with really fine paper because it's not gonna be smooth. And um, you'll be able to see all of the blemishes and the defects in your wall. Some of the defects here are showing up um, under my paint and I didn't even touch those spaces. So I guess there were already defects in the wall that probably needed to be patched up that I couldn't see until I really painted in here. So. Um, you know, get your walls as smooth as, as smooth as you can if you want it to be a really nice space. Um, for what I use it for, it's not that big of a deal, but uh, I should have probably hired a professional. So we did install electrical in the tiniest office. Um, there was a weird like random light bulb hanging at the top of the closet that I never even noticed before but it didn't work. It had a pull chain and the electrical just wasn't hooked up to it, I guess probably remaining before we remodeled our home. So I did call in a professional. My dad is a, a contractor and he came in and um, pulled wiring from the other side of the wall. Um, on the back side of the wall in the tiniest office is my living room and there was an outlet right there. So it was really convenient for him to just cut a hole in the sheetrock and um, pull through um, some wiring. So I have an electrical, uh, receptacle here with a switch um, behind my tiniest office sign and I also have plug-ins under the desk so four outlets total I still need to get plates to cover them um, but I'm really happy with the amount of electrical that happened in the walls and then he also installed track lighting um, at the top which you'll see in some of the um, after photos that's really nice it has a dimmer switch so I can dim the lights in here if I want to or I can have them on full bright for conference calls or whatever um, it's really convenient. So I did not touch the electrical myself. It was not pre-existing in the office um, and he did do that for me. So the time finally came to uh, pick colors and uh, figure out what the office is going to look like aesthetically. So um, I've been looking around on Etsy um, and I had already found this wallpaper behind me. Um, that I really liked. It had a nice like Scandinavian vibe to it and I will put a link to that um, Etsy store in the description of this video if you like it too or they have lots of other patterns and, and nice colors and it's completely self-adhesive. Um, but I did pick my wall color based on this wallpaper. Um, it's called Valspar's Silver Fox. I chose a semi-gloss um, which my father then informed me I should not have chosen. So semi-gloss really, really, really calls out all those little defects that you're gonna see on your walls from not sanding well enough. Um, so he said I should have gotten an eggshell or maybe a matte finish or uh, something like that that wouldn't be quite so shiny. I used it anyway um, and I don't hate it. I think most of my defects will probably be covered up by any art that I put on the walls. But at the end of the day, um, you know, you probably should choose eggshell if you wanna, you know, minimize the defects that show. All right, let's talk about self-adhesive wallpaper. Um, I did not get any video footage of me putting it up because I put it in myself and it was challenging. I think that it's not the manufacturer's fault. They give you really um, detailed instructions. They give you a little smoother tool, kind of like, a, almost like a credit card, but has felt around it. I threw it away so I don't have it anymore to show you, but um, to help smooth it out. But when you think about putting a giant adhesive on a wall and you think about how it really needs to be perfect, I want you to imagine every time you've ever put a phone protector on your screen, on your phone, um, you know that one bubble in the middle that you smooth down and you push and you, you gently and it's still there forever and it leaves you questioning all your life choices? That is this wallpaper and there are bubbles in it. Um, I did the best that I could as one person. Um, it's really a two-man job probably, but this office is so small that it was just not conducive to having a second person in here. I think um, looking back, if I could start over, um, I probably would have done a better job, but the issue um, is that even though it says you can peel it off and try and restick it, I did not have that luck.
So after the wallpaper, um, I was really hesitant to start on the contact paper for um, my desk shelf. I did purchase on Amazon a wooden um, kind of plank shiplap style um, contact paper. It had great reviews, but after trying to stick this giant thing on the wall, I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, so after much uh, blood, sweat, tears, weeping, gnashing of teeth, I decided to go ahead and do it. Before I did it though, I had um, my wonderful dad, again, I know I'm lucky to have that help, but he came with the drill bit that drills uh, big holes in the back of the desk so that my wires can go through and I don't have to have them hanging over the front of the desk to plug into the receptacle. So if you have a desk and it's not already got a hole in it for your wires, be sure to drill a hole before you do the contact paper. That way you can paper over it and take an X-Acto knife and go right around the edge of the hole and it looks perfect. So that's what I did. Um, I will say that the reviews were right. This contact paper is fabulous. Buy some, shiplap everything. It's great. Um, it was super easy to go on. Like it was just the polar opposite of the experience that I had with the wallpaper. Um, the only thing I did, the shelf was already painted white, so it was very slick. The only thing I did was just take some like multi-surface cleaner and make sure that there was no residue or anything gross on it from being in the closet all that time. And that was it. And I just put it on there, um, smoothed it out as I went and literally no issues. And it sticks well, even to that slick paint. I really thought it was going to be an issue and that it would want to peel up, but it hasn't. So. Um, love that contact paper. Also, there will be a link to that in the description if you know something you want to slap contact paper on. So now we're nearing the end. Um, I put the little wooden tabs back up on the, on the side of the walls. I measured 30 inches from the floor because that's standard desk height. So if you want your desk to be mounted to the walls with no um, legs taking up your foot space in your tiny office the way that I did, you'll need to measure 30 inches up um, from the floor so that your desk chair will fit. But I dropped that in there um, and it looked great. And then I filled it in with my, um, my yellow chair to match my wallpaper and my little faux sheepskin rug and all my little details. So now I'm just waiting um, for all of my art to come in and I will decorate the walls. So that's how it went. It was pretty, uh, pretty easy and pretty simple. Um, materials without any labor costs. Uh, I think I spent about, including the chair and including everything that's, that's in the office currently, I think I spent about $300. So um, from beginning to end with the wallpaper, that was probably the most expen expensive purchase. Um, that wallpaper is $100 for um, this one little 36 by 75 inch uh, panel. So you can buy it in a roll. I had them custom cut it for me. They were super helpful. Um, I told them that I didn't need a whole roll because it was really tiny in here. And they said, oh yeah, we'll be glad to do a custom order for you. And they did on Etsy. Um, and I just, I purchased it that way, but it was pricey. So I'm sure um, you could probably get some regular peel and stick wallpaper from Lowe's or whatever, but I really like this print and that was probably the biggest purchase was just getting that. So if you subtract that, um, it was about $200 for everything, paint, uh, joint compound, all the sanding sponges, and then my chair and all of the contact paper. So not a bad project really, going from um, a closet to a space that you can actually work in. I was really happy with that. So um, more details to come. I'll probably do an update um, in a later video to show all of the wall art that I purchased. I'm really excited about it. It's gonna be here in a few days, so I'll, I'll update everyone and do a full view of what that looks like fully decorated. I did stick with my Scandinavian theme, so I got some uh, a print, a Scandinavian art print, and some cute uh, minimalist like wooden shelves with a really light pine color to match the desktop. So I'm excited to see what those look like when they come in. But anyway, um, if you like this video, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Um, this is probably one of the few home renovation videos I will do. I created the tiniest office to start doing um, stationary hauls, unboxing. I'm a huge uh, subscription box fan. So, you know, in the future, there will be a conglomeration of different things. Um, but stick around. 